Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief It's justice. a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to the advocate. As my people say, today, now today, Sandra, a fresh face on the panel will be laying down the law as concerns gender based violence. Ekene mm, is all uh, for name and shame. In fact, she thinks we should have more of it. She's talking sex for grades. Liberals wants to tender his own summit on our financial summit. You know my man, liberals now, straight down the line. Chuka, not unknown to throw a curveball now and again. Today we'll be pitching it straight. He says, get a life, Nigeria. <laughs> I will be throwing my own way behind the sex for grace matter and bringing a global perspective. You know how we like to hit the tracks. No time wasting. After the break, Let's go there. Some things may seem to be dominant until you take a step back. Sex for Max. I believe we all saw the BBC report on sex for Max in our universities. It's clear that abuse of power is prevalent in the world, not only in Nigeria or Africa, but we should know that not only those lecturers abuse their office. In fact, in every home, organization, civil service, and even religious centers, there is one form of abuse or other. Watching this documentary made me remember a scripture that says, there was no king in Israel at that time. Everyone did whatever they pleased, Judges 21, 25. However, I don't think we should wait for any foreign media to remind us of the menace in our land and how to handle it. By the way, it's not only in Nigeria that sexual harassment takes place. It's all over the world. Recently, in the UK, a supply teacher in Doncaster took a puppy home for uh, three- and four-way sexual activity. Uh, Francis Jenkins, 45-year-old, also paid another person approximately £13,000, partly so um, he would cover up her relationship with the girl. Dean Richard Johnson, 52-year-old man, admitted contacting a puppy through Facebook, buying her underwear, inviting her to his classroom for sex, and recording them together on a camera, but with school funds. That's corruption, right? Okay. In 2015, he was separately um, convicted at Guildford Crown Court of possessing extreme pornography and jail for eight months suspended for two years. John Flatley, 30, sent sexual Snapchat messages to a female pupil after attending a prom at a school in Southwest London. This included a vibrator or dido. Would you like both? And well, um, you do love your bed, so you might as well spoil me with snaps. Where are the kings of our universities? Like that scripture says, when kings fail in their duties, people do as they like. And this is what is on display. Kings refer to the leaders, the institutions that reform and shape people and the reward and sanctions for bad behavior. And let's remember that this behavior is likely the same in other sectors and workplaces and offices. Sexual harassment is in almost every sector. Innumerable cases of lady friends whose recruitment needed to be cemented with consent to give sex.
to the headhunter, bosses taking advantage of their junior staff, lecturers to their um, students, husbands to their house guests. This really is a time for us to ask ourselves the pertinent question. Am I, as a male, free from sexual harassment of any kind? Because men also experience this, only they don't really talk about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We need to create an enabling environment for both males and females and protect them as kings and queens. And this we must do deliberately. It's time for us as a people to have a new set of kings in Nigeria. May our kings wake up to their duties and ensure people play by the rules. Sexual harassment is a no-no and must be condemned by all. If you know the budget for sex in Nigeria is higher than the budget, the national budget. National budget. <laughs> Come on, say it again. Yes. The mm. this, uh, you, you see, um, these days, gradually, when um, these things, you, before these are things that were taboo, mm. but um, in our attempt to embrace hook, line, and sinker, that which was um, imported. You know, imported and introduced to us, we overdid it. And then, thanks to not just moral decadence, the fact that um, now what we have, there are no more sanctions. Our laws are obeyed more in breach. Like the UK you refer to. Mm. It is not even that, you know, these were students under these lecturers. Yeah. You know, the um, uh, authorities melted out appropriate sanctions. Yeah. But here, it is happening, and until somebody shouts, you suspend the lecturer, and then a committee will be set up to investigate, and at the end and of the day, it will fizzle out. And there are no steps, initiative, to ensure that you know, this thing is curtailed. Because when you talk about um, university, it, it's, people are talking about it in the university because it's supposed to be an institution that grooms you in character mm -hmm. and learning. Frank, between what is happening here and what is happening in the UK America. Yeah, that, that's true. Yes, in the UK America, what they're doing is, is even mostly in primary schools. It's, that mm -hmm. means it's lower down the, wow. the age thing. And so the teachers are much older mm -hmm. than the students. They are not doing it for grades. That's they're true. doing it for kicks. Yeah. In Nigeria, it's for grades. Mm. It's good you know, and, that you know, yeah. and you're doing it with people that are on the last stage of the education chain. Mm. You're mm. Just when you know after this, you probably... Not which, is, which, which as, as Liberal said, it's not true because mm. you then go on and in the office, yes. you're, you're back to square one mm. where your boss is now harassing you. Exactly. So, but let's just look at it as saying, this is the last time you have such power over somebody, yeah. which is university. And so that's why it has become the way it is. Mm. Uh, so there's a bit of a difference. And when you look at the way they attack these matters abroad, I actually applaud them. You know, they humiliate the teacher. Mm -hmm. and I don't think there's even one teacher who has been dealt with that doesn't feel ashamed yeah. for having done what he did. I mean, I, I, but, yeah, please you know, finish. these lecturers, they're doing it with adults. So I think it's very, very different. Yeah. It's, it's going to be very difficult to... to um, make them ashamed of what they've done. Well, I mean, you can, you can. No, no, I mean, okay. But I will talk okay, about it. Okay, so, um, you know, when Libras, he said something about um, there not being sanctions, and which I quite disagree, because um, when you look at our laws, there are actually sanctions for each of these um, crimes and offences. The question is, are these sanctions stiff enough to prevent perpetrators or with intentions from, you know, further committing these crimes? Three to five years? Is that not stiff enough? That's very stiff. Tell me, but are you sure it's, what, it's apart not being from, done? Apart from, that being one lecturer, at at apart from that one lecturer that was mm. given six years, tell me another one that... But please, that's what I mean. Now, that's, that yeah. exactly, yeah. Mm. which brings home my point of enforcement. So these mm. sanctions are there, but do we really enforce this law? Coming to my point. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, no, what you said was quite different. You said there are no sanctions, sanctions yeah. which I oh, think okay. there are sanctions. Okay, you probably... But they're not being enforced. They're not being enforced. I'll take it literally. I'll forgive you your figures. But go on, anyway. I get it. The reason why they're not being, really, I think because um, in my own point of view, I would say we live in a country where you can actually buy freedom, you can buy justice or you can buy injustice. Mm -hmm. So not technically saying going to, uh, you know, going behind to bribe judges or our justice system, first of all, is crippled in the sense that there is, um, you, you lodge a complaint, or a, a university student, for instance, lodges a complaint in court, and it takes several years before you can even go on trial. These students 
they are victims of um, they are victims of sexual violence. They could decide that they do not want to pursue this case anymore because they want to, you know they want to forget about the experience. They want to move on with their lives. That not and be this a exactly yeah. and this situation leads to slow persecution of cases. And at the end of the day, there is nothing to convict the the offender with and he goes on scot free yeah let me come in on that let me um, because i was just thinking about the culture when you know all of you were speaking i'm saying and he uh, chuka was making the distinction between the uk and here i'm happy the bbc did what they did because i just mm -hmm. feel and when i come to my advocacy hopefully we'll explore that further mm -hmm. but i just feel that the culture here even the victims themselves are victims in their own minds first because they feel that they don't have a choice i have somebody who is close to me who stays with me was being sexually harassed but she didn't tell me until the last minute. The, the man had the courage to bring out his private and show to her. And, her and, and when she told me, I'm like, that's the end. This thing, I'm not going to let it rest. So I escalated it, and I reported and I reported. You know, even the people she, I was reporting to were busy trying to say, oh, apologize to her. Mm. You know, after yeah. having done that and yeah. she let him off the hook, he had the courage to be making Leave fun of her, God. Making fun of her in the exactly. public sphere. That was the one that offended her, that I refused you. But you have the courage to go around making me look bad to Save everybody. It for God. You know, I said no. This one, they had to fire the man because I said to myself, "How dare okay. you oppress this woman who is trying to?" And even in reporting, the people around were making her feel bad. How, even other women were mocking her and saying, "You know, is it just because he showed it to you? What is there? What is wrong? You know, yeah. is that why you're?" you're and, and I said, "No. We women, we need to be empowered. Students need to be empowered. They need to know their rights. They need to understand that they have every right to stand up for themselves." And you know, they shouldn't feel victimized by the fact that men or society sees them as somehow the lesser. Okay. Let, me the lesser quickly, let me quickly say something here. Mm. Yeah. Where you have sanctions in the books that are not enforced, what it means is that there are none. Secondly, the university, you don't need to wait to get to court for you to take steps to curtail. You can have a, an independent body that these people can report to mm. and then conduct independent investigation to verify without necessarily even calling on the victim yeah, the to come clearly. testify. Mm. So people, the, you organizations, I, I used to be a facilitator in an organization. After, first, after each training, you set exams for the students, then you give them assessment forms that another facilitator would come collect. And then you wouldn't know who would, call, who would assess your, your assessment forms. While you're assessing the students, they also assess you. Yeah. How many universities still do this? Yeah. In some cases, I know the one that happened to a pastor, the church members were, the, in fact, the, the pressure on the young girl's parents was so much, oh, please don't let the devil use you to bring down this pastor. And not too long ago or so, you saw the, the COSA issue. You saw the back and forth, and it's still on. Still but on. I like the fact that, um, um, what's the name of this um, church now? They came out immediately and issued oh, a statement. Foursquare. Four, four four square. Square. They, yeah, they didn't wait. They didn't wait. And to no, begin I, to I, I'm, deny. I'm not applauding them. Because no, no, no. How could a man like that get to be senior pastor of your church? You Did you scream this? Ah, no, you will not. Ah, you will not. You can see the sign. Okay, no, there are no, you're, just, there you're talking are no, about character. You're talking about character assessment. Yeah. You can. You can tell. The man, was, are, the man yeah. was very arrogant in the way he went about it. I don't think well, it's something some people that would know in the church. I, I, yes, I hold that church accountable be, for having you know, him but as I a think, senior pastor. But I think that the younger generation now coming up are going to, um, I, are probably the ones that are going to make the lecturers are unable to carry on like this. Sorry, because I'm still on this, Pastor. Forgive me. Because oh, okay. the same Bible that teaches us, this, it says, by their fruit you shall know them. Are you telling me that the church doesn't have enough discernment to know a man who is lecherous? Okay, there are so many things we overlook. There are so many things we overlook, uh, many, uh, overlook in this, and then in this society then we poor judgment, that, even ordinarily, we that ordinarily... Sir, are you accepting this? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Don't the, forget. The I don't accept it. No, the thing is, you mm. can't, you can't tell. everywhere. You can't everywhere. tell. It was obvious to me, even it's, watching it's the video. It's not meeting your faces. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's my, no, it, it really is. Then we're not looking, really we're not looking deeply enough. It really is mm. But I look forward to the younger generation. They will be the ones to, to humiliate. Which one? The one big body here that big body here? No, he's not the younger. No, he's just big body here last week. older than the younger generation. I'm really referring now to people who are fed. No, he's not no. referring to my generation. He's, he's, he's referring to the generation that I addressed last week. Last week. <laughs> about their generation, that they are not being their sense. Okay. okay. Yeah, anyway, so. um, it's about changing the negative culture, one advocacy at a time. Sandra further drives the point home after the break.